Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread devotional and scripture song broadcast for this second day of November. And it is a new month, and we started into the new Baptist Bread devotional booklet yesterday, and then the new scripture song CD. Amen. So, um, praise the Lord. All right, well, today's topic for the second is titled Convictions with Compassion. So, amen. And uh, we're reading that here in a few minutes. First, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And hope and pray that he is your Lord and Savior today, because if he's not, well, he wants to be. And if you'll just humble yourself and trust him as your Savior and repent of your sin and um, realize you can't get you uh, to heaven your own way and get saved your own way, it's only by uh, Jesus and what he did on the cross that he will wash away your sin and give you eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so we won't have to spend eternity without Christ. So let's get that settled today. If you're watching and you're not saved, if you are saved, we'll hope and pray this is an encouragement to you. That's why I do these devotional uh, broadcasts. And amen. And um, lots of good stuff uh, in these little uh, Baptist Bread devotional booklets and uh, the boots on the ground. Uh, good stuff in there too. So amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to start with today's scripture song, which is from Acts twenty twenty eight. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost made you overseers to feed the church of God which you purchased with his own blood. Amen. Take heed for unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, to feed the church of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God to feed the church of God he hath purchased with his own blood and Purchased with his own blood. Amen. Praise the Lord for Jesus. Amen. All right. So we'll put that back to the first and we'll do those towards the end of the broadcast again. Now it's time to get into today's topic for the second day of. November, Wednesday, and it is titled, Convictions with Compassion. So, amen. All right, so let me read you the passage here from Matthew 14, 14a. And it says here, And Jesus went forth, amen, and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them. Matthew 14, 14a. And today's author is T.M. That would be the initials for... Uh, I believe that's Tom Malone. Yep, and uh, he is deceased, went to be with the Lord, and he was from Pontiac, Michigan. So, amen. All right, so I want to read the rest of uh, verse 14, just so you can get an idea of what's going on here. <clears throat> and then we'll get into the topic. So, Matthew 14, and verse 14, might have to go back a little bit. So, let's see, 14, 14. All right, so we'll go back to uh, verse 13. It says, When Jesus heard it, or heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Amen. So verses four, uh, 13 and 14. And let's see here, um, this was talking about, uh, go back to the beginning here, uh, Herod the Tetrarch um, had heard the fame of Jesus, and then uh, 
he said unto his um, servants, uh, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore uh, mighty works do, do show forth themselves in him. And then uh, it said, For Herod had laid hold on John, and was talking about him putting him in prison, and all that stuff, and then thought, uh, thought that he was uh, come back from the dead, and because he, because uh, John the Baptist didn't approve of him uh, marrying his brother's wife, and then so she had him uh, decapitated, so and brought on the charger and all that stuff. So, all right. So I just wanted to give you that uh, background there on that. So, amen. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and get into the topic here on convictions with compassion. And the author is uh, Tom Malone, and he writes, God help us as Christians to have such convictions today that we can say to God and to men, until the mountains crumble to dust, I will never lower the blood-stained flag of the cross. Hmm. Yeah, good. So, let's say that to somebody. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so, continuing on, it says we must also preach with compassion. My friends, there is absolutely no substitute for compassion in the work of God. Amen to that. Uh, you may have everything else in the world. You may have the greatest talent a person could be endowed with. You may have the greatest mind possible. But there is no substitute for a compassionate heart in the work of God. Amen. So we must come to people with compassion and tell them... Uh, how much uh, Jesus wants to save their soul and have compassion on, on them and, uh, and uh, amen. All right. So continue. I says preachers, if you can preach and preach and preach and preach and never shed a tear, uh, never have your heart broken, never know what it means to travail and agonize with an agony akin to that which Jesus had in Gethsemane. If you can preach without tears and compassion. You are going to do a lot of preaching without souls. Ooh, yikes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, he says, I says, I see Jesus coming yonder on the Mount of Olives and looking down on the city of Jerusalem. And from a broken heart, he cries, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. The Bible says he beheld the city and wept over it, and if we are to move people toward God, we have to have some tears. Mm. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Sure, sure do. So, if we're uh, preaching without compassion and don't have some sh uh, shed tears and not really concerned about uh, people's souls, then uh, how we expect to really bring people to Jesus if we don't have any compassion and and warn them with compassion amen <clears throat> so all right that's good uh, good advice there so let's take heed to that convictions with compassion and Jesus had lots of compassion and he still has compassion on us today amen so probably up there weeping over us because we just tend to not want to follow him and obey him like we should hmm. so all right, so that's that, and now time to get into the Boots on the Ground devotional for the second day of November, and this is titled, Distraction Leads to Disaster. <laughs> right, so any type of distraction is not good, and it might not necessarily be sinful, but uh, just anything that's going to take us away from reading our Bible and praying and seeking the Lord and having fellowship with Him and a relationship with Him and uh, going out and telling others about Jesus and all that stuff, so um, amen. So this takes place on November 2nd, 1944, and we have uh, another um, uh, passage from Matthew, and this is Matthew 11:15. It says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear, Matthew 11:15. And so this is from Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells. So let's uh, get into this topic. He writes here, uh, Lieutenant Herb uh, D uh Dalinance, D-A-L-L-I-A-N-C-E, Dalinance, uh, was assigned to the 1st Platoon, uh, Fox Company, 28th Infantry Division during World War II. Uh, eager to prove himself in combat, D Dalinance, 
uh, was always volunteering himself and his men for hazardous pa hazardous patrols during the battle for the uh, Hurt Hurtgen, Hurtgen Forest in November 1944. American troops were ordered to cross the Call, Call River, K A L L Call River, to take the village of Schmidt. Uh, Delegates assembled at the battalion command post to hear the combat briefings and patrol orders uh, for that morning. The company commander detailed the opposition that lay ahead in the village of Schmidt. Uh, he spoke of German truth, uh, troop strength, so he spoke of German troop strength, artillery pieces, and their tanks. During the speech, uh, Dalinance uh, er erroneously chose to chit-chat with another lieutenant with whom he had attended West Point. <laughs> Not a good thing to do sometimes chit-chat with uh, somebody, especially if it's the enemy. Uh, as the colonel was ending the briefing, D uh, Delinance uh, thought he heard, Men, this will be a picnic, as the Germans are vastly outnumbered. In reality, the colonel said, Men, this will be no picnic, as the Germans have us vastly outnumbered. So, he uh, thought he heard one thing, but he was actually saying another thing. So, let's make sure we keep our ears open to hear what's said and not just hear what we think we uh, heard and double check to make sure we heard what we thought we heard because we might have heard wrong. Amen. So a good good thing there uh, to take heed of. All right, so continuing on, it says, when uh, they were all dismissed, Delinance uh, went back to his platoon and told the men that they didn't need to bring extra ammo or grenades. <laughs> Uh, he explained that it was useless to arrange for another company to follow them in case they were cut off. The colonel, after all, said it would be a picnic on November, on 2nd November 1944. The 28th Infantry entered the Call Gorge and suffered one of the, mo the worst defeats in its history. The week-long battle was among the costliest division attacks of the war, for the U.S. Army, with casualties exceeding 6,000 mm, uh, Delinance and all 38 men of the 1st Platoon were slaughtered that day, all because he did not focus and listen. <laughs> Good advice. So let's focus and listen. Listen to what God has to say to us and focus on it and make sure we're really listening and hearing right. Amen. And that goes for any conversation we have with anybody. All right, so uh, he writes here, continue on. Too often, hundreds don't listen to wives and employees don't listen to employers. Most disastrous of all, sinners fail to listen to the word of God and Christians turn a deaf ear to the Holy Spirit. Eight times in the Gospels, the Lord Jesus admonishes followers to listen carefully to what he had to say. Mm. Rather than being distracted by things of this world, we should listen to God's word carefully and obey it diligently. <laughs> so, listen to God's word carefully and obey it diligently and put away those things that distract us. So, if we're not fully focused on God and we're half focused, we're not going to hear everything he has to say to us. If we're half focused on what somebody else is talking to us about, we're not going to hear everything they have to say. So, Put down that distraction and focus and listen and amen. All right, so yikes. <laughs> Good stuff there. All right, so now it's time to get into the hymn for today. And let's see here. So I'm going to attempt to try to sing along with this hymn. It sounds a little challenging, but I'm going to try it and see how it goes. All right, so this is titled Thy Word. Have I hid in my heart, in mine heart. And this is the memorization of the scriptures, a spiritual song. So it's good to memorize scripture and let it sink into your heart and get rooted deep down inside of us. Amen. And this is written by Ernest O. Sellers, who lived from 1869 to 1952. And he did verses 1 through 4. And then we have, uh, it says, verified by Ernest O. Sellers. Uh, again, he lived from 1869 to 
1952, and he did the refrain. And so, amen. All right, so this is uh, Thy Word Have I Hid in Mine Heart. So press play here, and I'll see. Here, let me grab this to make sure. Amen. My word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path, a way to guide and to save me from sin, and show me the heavenly way. Thy word, thy word, if I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, that I might not sin, that I might not sin, that I might not, that thy word have a hid in my heart. Alright. Okay, I'm just gonna let this finish playing. That was a poor attempt on that. <laughs> Alright, well, that was uh, the instrumental, and I apologize about not uh, being able to keep up with that, but I'll go ahead and read you the stanzas here, and then we'll uh, move on to the references, and then uh, there is no story for this one, so um, then we'll move on to the scripture songs. So, again, stanza one says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path alway, to guide and to save me from sin, and show me the heavenly way. Stanza 2, forever, O Lord, is thy word established and fixed on high. Thy faithfulness unto all men abideth forever nigh. At morning, at noon, and at night, I ever will give thee praise. For thou art my portion, O Lord, and shall be through all my days. Stanza 4, through him whom thy word hath foretold. The Savior and Morning Star, salvation and peace have been brought to those who have strayed afar. And then the refrain uh, uh, says, "This is very uh, versification of Psalm one nineteen eleven. Says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against Thee, that I might not sin, that I might not sin. Thy word have I hid in mine heart." Amen. All right, so here's the references here. We got Psalm 119, 105, and then Psalm 119, 90, or for that for first stanza, Psalm 119, 105, and then for stanza two, we have one, uh, Psalm 119, 89, and Psalm 119, 98, and then stanza three is uh, Psalm 55, 17, and Psalm 119, 57, and then stanza four, we have Revelation 22, 18, and Ephesians 2, 11 through 17. And of course, for the refrain, we have Psalm 119, 11. Amen. So that is the hymn. And I'll put that aside. And now we'll go ahead and do the scripture songs again. So praise the Lord. All right. So here we go. We'll do yesterday's, the first, and then we'll do the second. So here we go. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. There we go. All right. 
Job 36, 5. Behold, God is mighty, and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. That's right. Behold, God is mighty, God is mighty, and despiseth not any. God is mighty, He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. Behold, God is mighty, God is mighty. Praise the Lord. All right, now we'll conclude with today's. Acts 20, 28. Take, Take heed, heed therefore unto yourselves, yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which you have purchased with his own blood. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, to feed the church of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, as always, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the boots on the ground devotionals and then the hymn for tomorrow. So you be ready ahead of time to know what's going to be uh, the, the topics for tomorrow. So the um, scripture song for the third will be 1 Corinthians 1.10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Amen. So there you go. That's the scripture song for tomorrow. And then the topic for the Baptist Bread devotional is titled, uh, Good, Very Good, and Not Good. <laughs> All right, so that's the topic for tomorrow for the third. And then the passage is Genesis 1, 4a, all the way back to the beginning with Genesis chapter 1 and verse 4 and the first part of verse 4. So, amen. Uh, good, very good, and not good. And so... Tomorrow's author is Tim Green, Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So he's the author for tomorrow again. And then the Boots on the Ground devotional for tomorrow is going to be titled, uh, Beware of the Dragon's Deception. And this takes place on May 29, uh, 1592, all the way back to the year 1592. And then we got the passage from 2 Corinthians 2.11. So, that's the passage for the Boots on the Ground topic. And then tomorrow's hymn is going to be titled, The Dear Volume of Thy Book. And this is hymn 180. We've reached hymn 180 already in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Amen. And so that will be uh, that. And this is one by Isaac Watts. So, many of us know him. Isaac Watts, he's done lots of hymns. So, this one's from him. All right, and then if you want to get a copy of the book, it's available on MelodyPublications.com. It's where you can get a copy of that. And then the, um, the Scripture Songs book and CDs 
are available on the internet at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That is Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website. And they are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So keep them in your prayers. Amen. And pray for her mom. Um, so, amen. She's battling with cancer. And uh, pray for her and um, uh, Sister Patty as she's taking care of her right now here in the U.S. And then for Brother Dean, he's still over there dealing with a lot of health issues. So pray for him. Amen. And all those that are um, under him and uh, doing the work of the Lord over there. So praise God. All right. And also you can pray for the Holtz, uh, Brother um, Brother Holt and Sister Holt and their uh, mission work and what they're doing for the Lord. Amen. He's planning on going back over there, I think, sometime next year to um, spend a year over there and get things uh, rolling again. So amen. So pray for them. All right. So that's that. And then the Baptist Bread um, devotional book. This is the cover for this month and next month. And you can get a copy of that and order a subscription by going to www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then we got the Baptist Bread devotional, or I mean the Boots on the Ground devotional book. And this is uh, Boots on the Ground Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells. And that is available to order off the internet And if you want to get a copy of that. Amen. And then also uh, on my podcast, I've been reading the book If I Perish by Esther on Kim. Uh, her story and pretty good so far so check that out on my podcast at god's messenger lighthouse podcast amen and uh so praise the lord for uh that and that's available on spotify or iheart radio or um anchor which is another platform of uh spotify i think it's the sister um uh part of it so amen all right well that'll be it for today so thanks for watching and may the lord richly bless you until next time bye for now